Hi ladies and gentlemen of Biology 400, this is Mr. Workman and this is going to be for your microscopy um, unit. This will be screencast session two. As always, make sure that you have paper out for note taking or um, even your entire unit booklet because there are going to be some page numbers that I'm going to reference near the end of this presentation. As always, make sure your main ideas are on the left hand side of your two column notes pages and uh, key terms as well. Those would be on the left hand side of your two column notes and then explanations, definitions, and examples will be on the right hand side of your notes. So let's get started. Um, this presentation is going to focus on uh, why and you use different types of microscopes rather than light microscopes and uh, what those different types of microscopes are. The first thing I want you to notice here on this diagram uh, and this diagram is in your unit booklet, so it's a good thing to reference for your, yourself as well. I want you to notice that uh, from the left to the right side of this diagram, the objects in the diagram are getting bigger. And the scale here is uh, a 10 time multiplying scale. So each one of these units here, what's happening is the size of our scale is increasing by a factor of 10. Um, <coughs> and well, except for a couple of exceptions. Actually, that's true. Ten, it's a power of 10, each unit on the scale here. Um, and what you can see is that, for the most part, we can see objects that are, you know, about a half a millimeter um, or five-tenths of a millimeter and larger without any type of assistance. But if we want to see anything smaller than that and really look at what they look like, we need a, a light microscope for that. Well, if you want to see things that are smaller than about, oh, 200 nanometers or so, um, and a nanometer is a billionth of a meter, um, if you want to see objects that are smaller than that, you need to have what's called an electron microscope. And so if we want to see the inside of cell structures, that is, or very small type cells like bacterial cells, you need what we call an electron microscope. So. Let's talk about why that is. <clears throat> First of all, when you think about electron microscopes, these are microscopes that use electron beams rather than light. And the reason we use electron microscopes is this main idea right here, that a light microscope can't be used to distinguish objects that are smaller than the half a wavelength of, of standard light. Um, and we can get into this more in class and we can actually draw uh, how light is a wave. Um, and when the wavelength is larger than the object you're trying to see, then light doesn't reflect off of that object very well, and so a light microscope can't be used. So if we have a smaller diameter than 0.275 micrometers, and a micrometer or a micrometer is one millionth of a meter, um, you know, objects like that will be invisible or be very blurry uh, using light. Now, the way electron microscopes use is that uh, a beam of electrons is uh, pushed through a vacuum and their wavelength is really, really small. And so what that means is that electron um, beams of electrons will bounce off and reflect off of little tiny objects, uh, whereas light wavelengths which just pass around really tiny objects. And what you see down here in this uh, picture is an electron microscope. And here is where the source of electron beam comes from, and it shoots down through this tube. And you would actually put the specimen in this door right here. In modern electron microscopes, the images are resolved on a computer screen. And as you can see, these ele this electron microscope takes up the, a, a large majority of the space of a room. We don't have one here at Downers Grove South High School. Uh, they're very expensive and they're very big and they're complicated to operate. Um, electron microscopes first really came into um, use in the 1930s. So again on electron microscopes it doesn't use light. It uses a beam of electrons. Um, and in many instances the specimens have to be prepared in a vacuum uh, which means they pull all the air out of the chamber where the specimen is inserted and living things as a result, cannot be viewed using this type of scope. In some scanning electron microscopes, you can use a partial vacuum, and so sometimes you can see living objects, uh, but they don't stay alive very long. 
the real wonderful thing about electron microscopes is you can get very, 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 very large scale of magnification, almost 200,000 times, which is much higher magnification than you can get with a light microscope. So um, again, this is another image of a scanning. Uh, uh, by the way, this is a scanning electron microscope. There's two main families of electron microscopes. This is a scanning electron microscope. Um, this is where the beam of electrons are uh, pushed into the chamber, and this right here for this for this particular model is where you would place your specimen. Scanning electron microscopes are termed SEM. What happens is their beam of electrons is um, generated from what's referred to as an electron gun, and those electrons are pushed down through these circular lenses, and so you actually focus an electron beam with a magnet, these sort of cylindrical or cylinder-shaped magnets. And what happens is um, electrons bounce off your specimen and they scatter back and what happens is this: there's a detector in the machine that detects the pattern of the bouncing of electrons and there's generally a couple of different electron detectors and what happens is a computer really decides well what is this reflecting uh, look like and it resolves that image to a television screen or a computer monitor. Um, so these are some of the ideas here that you know bounces electrons off the surface of an object and the thing that's neat about a scanning electron microscope is you get to see a three-dimensional resolution because there's depth of field um, of an image that you're trying to look at. So this is a scanning electron image of red blood cells and red blood cells are these beautiful looking um, almost donut donut shaped or donut like objects that you're seeing here. This is uh, red blood cells trapped in um, some clotting factor protein. This is the beginning of a blood clot. Um, these are all scanning electron uh, microscope images. Um, these are nerve cells. Uh, uh, this is the body of the cell and then these long um, tube-like structures, we call those, th those are the axons, or maybe these are the dendrites, the endings of your nerve cells, which uh, electrical impulses travel down the length of. This is a, a taste bud um, within a, a section of a tongue. Uh, this is what your taste buds look like on the surface. This is um, sperm uh, interacting on the surface of uh, an egg cell. Uh, you know, these Sperm are obviously much smaller than what you're seeing down here. The egg is uh, much larger than the sperm cells are. This is a split end. This is a broken off end of a uh, human hair. And you can see this is a three-dimensional image and um, pretty cool stuff. These are bacterial colonies or tooth plaque that are growing on the surface of a tooth. This is the stuff that grows on your teeth if you don't uh, brush your teeth after a couple of days. Um, actually, they're growing on your teeth all the time. This is the what makes your breath really stinky in the morning, so brush that off, ladies and gentlemen. And then this is our other main family of electron microscopes. This is called a transmission electron microscope. And I want you to think about those two terms. A scanning electron microscope scans the surface, and so you see the outside of your um, specimen that you're viewing, whereas a transmission electron microscope, actually what you do is you... Uh, transmit, that, that means pushing through, the objects push through or transmit through the specimen. So with a transmission elec electron microscope, and again this is uh, your electron gun and your specimen would be placed probably in this chamber right here, and you actually view here through this eye view, and in this particular model it looks like the image is also projected on a TV screen. In a transmission electron microscope, the electrons transmit through your specimen so you can see interior structures in, uh, when you use a transmission electron microscope. This again is a similar idea with how the scanning electron microscope used. You have a source of electrons and uh, the lenses are actually uh, circular or cylindrical magnets and the electrons actually beam through your specimen. <clears throat> And what this, do, what this does is it forms a two-dimensional picture rather than a three-dimensional picture. This actually should be a two here. Um, 
and so you can't see the surface or you don't see really any depth of field or three-dimensional uh, depth quality to your image. What you do see though is interior structures. Um, these um, transmission electron microscopes require you to slice your specimens about oh, two micrometers in thickness, really, 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 really thin sections. And the process to make those thin sections is actually pretty involved as well. <clears throat> what you're seeing here, this is a transmission uh, electron micrograph or a transmission electron microscope photograph of the inside of bacterial cells from the inside of the digestive tract of a termite. And bacterial cells are really small themselves, and what you're seeing is the inside of these structures. It's pretty neat. Um, these are the um, cross-section of sperm heads from um, a walking stick insect. Um, these are salmonella bacteria, and you know, so this is this is one long salmonella bacterial cell here. And with transmission electron micrographs, you can start to see the interior structures of these small, small, tiny cells. Another family of microscopes um, that aren't electron microscopes, this is another type of light microscope. This is called a stereoscope. And if you think about this word stereo, when you're hearing sound in stereo, you're hearing it from multiple sp sounds or multiple spaces. Um, and the way that a stereoscope works is you use both of your eyes rather than one in uh, a binocular um, uh, objective, not objective lens, binocular ocular lenses here. And they're not for viewing tiny, tiny, tiny things. They're actually small things, but we use the word macroscopic. And we look at the surface of these um, objects with the stereoscope. And because of that, you're looking at the surface of uh, these objects, you don't actually need light to be passing through the object. Uh, you can just look at the surface of an object. Um, stereoscopes generally have two sources of light. They can have light coming from underneath, and there's generally a light bulb up here that shines light down onto the surface of the object as well. The great thing about stereoscopes is you can view living things, um, like with, in some instances, uh, compound light microscopes. Um, but the magnification is much smaller, so about 10 times to 30 times. It depends on the particular model uh, and the specifications of the stereoscope that you're using. But they don't magnify that much. But, the, you know, just to give you an example for what you would use it for, this would be like looking at the surface of a penny, and you can actually see the details of Lincoln's beard. Um, whereas if you just look at it with an unaided eye, you don't really even notice that, you know, Abraham Lincoln has a beard. Um, on the United States $5 bill, there are some small little um, printed words, five dollars, and this is one of the things that the uh, you know the the mint, which is the organization that prints our money at the United States, uses to um, ensure that the currency that people are passing around are uh, is authentic. Um, what I would like you to do now is to go find page 39 in your current unit booklet and work through the microscope review activities and then pages 41 through uh, 43. Actually, I think it's 41 and 42 now that I'm looking at these page numbers. And you should be completing the microscope lab skills review. And, um, you know, I hope you know now more about um, electron microscopes. Those are the scanning electron microscopes and transmission electron microscopes. And then, of course, stereoscopes as well. So that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll see you again sometime.